CBS News Chief White House Correspondent Major Garrett joins us now from our Washington Bureau. Great to see you. It looks like uh, Mitt Romney is getting under Trump's skin, but the conversation is still revolving around Trump and his taxes, not the other candidate. So is he helping or hurting Trump? Well, so what Mitt Romney is trying to do is sow seeds of doubt about one of the things that Donald Trump has going for him among his legions of supporters. I talk to them at every Trump rally I go to, and invariably what you hear them say is, Trump is a businessman, he's really successful, he knows how to make money, he knows how to create jobs, and I think that's what the country needs in its president, someone who really understands the economy. So what seed of doubt is Mitt Romney trying to sow? Number one, that Trump may not be as wealthy as he says he is, and that he may not in his business workings have been either as ethical or as shrewd as he often represents himself to be. Now, why would Mitt Romney raise this? To try to create some sense of doubt about that which Trump says to his supporters he is. The best capable, best businessman, smartest guy in the room when it comes to creating jobs and creating economic growth. Will it work? Who knows? But what Trump has told us through his reaction to Romney, which is not on the substance, which is not to say there's no bombshell in my taxes. My taxes are all great. He says they're complex and I'm working on it and it will take some time. So in that respect, if Romney's getting under Trump's skin, it's only in the sense that Trump does not feel at this point, for whatever reason, willing to deny the central charge that there's a bombshell in there. Now there is one hazard to put on the table here. If there isn't a bombshell, then Romney does look like a fool and he's just lobbed some issue in there that Trump can swiftly bat away. Trump is shrewd enough, and his campaign has proved this at times, to wait and wait and wait for curiosity to build and then drop the dime and say, see, there's nothing there. We don't know how this is going to play out, except we know this. It'll come up at the debate stage tonight because everyone not named Donald Trump has got to find some means by which to slow Trump's momentum. Maybe the tax issue is one of them. They don't have much else to work with. So it'll be a big topic tonight. Okay, so let's explore that a little bit, Major. Like you said, a uh, big debate tonight. It's the last debate before a Super Tuesday. Trump is leading in most of the states. Mm -hmm. So let's first talk Marco Rubio. Sure. Uh, you know, his strategy has been basically to leave Trump alone. He's not really attacking him. And in fact, over the past few days, he's sort of joined Donald Trump in attacking Ted Cruz. Now we're talking about the debate, though. He has to try and push forward. He has to try and threaten Donald Trump in some way. What does he need to do? Well, Marco Rubio first needs to say to Republicans, I'm the best alternative you have to Donald Trump. And that means he also has to deal with Ted Cruz, because right now the two of them have the same number of delegates, 17 each. And Donald Trump has 81. That's what we're talking about on the delegate math. Trump is well ahead. Of the 133 delegates apportioned so far, Trump has 81 or 60 percent of them. That's a huge lead and a huge haul in the first four contests. So what Rubio has to do is say, you know what, Ted Cruz says he's the most conservative in this race. I'm just as conservative or more, but I can unify the party. And if it gets down to a race between me and Donald Trump, then and only then can I win. There's one huge problem. Cruz is not getting out of the race. Cruz has more money to work with than Marco Rubio, at least at this stage. And Ben Carson and John Kasich aren't getting out of the race. So Rubio has to look in two directions, Cruz and upward toward Trump, and then figure out a way to tell people that he is the best alternative to Trump without taking on Trump directly. Because as he knows, and every other Republican knows, when you do that and the withering fire of Trump's criticism rains down upon you, it usually doesn't turn out very well. How about Ted Cruz, Major? He's come in third in the last two states. He's also no longer dominating with evangelicals. So what does his path to the nomination look like as the several southern states are set to vote? And you hit on it very importantly, third. Third in South Carolina was not a disaster, but it was very close. You can see disaster from where Ted Cruz finished. Why? Because he spent months organizing in that state and spent a lot of time telling those who were following his campaign that he had a great ground game. Guess what? It didn't show up. As a matter of fact, I've talked to Ted Cruz supporters in South Carolina who are shaking their heads after that primary because what they think happened is all that advocacy and voter outreach for Ted Cruz on his behalf gave a lot of people information about the primary. And guess what some of them did? They went ahead and voted for Trump. People initially inclined to vote for Cruz voted for Trump because they're drawn to his stronger message one that they believe is more resonant than Ted Cruz's. So it may have in some ways, ironically, worked against Ted Cruz that he organized in South Carolina so well. 
His performance in South Carolina and Nevada undercuts one of Cruz's central claims to conservative primary voters, that I can win, that I can out-organize and, out and out-maneuver all the other Republican rivals I have. If Ted Cruz doesn't win his home state of Texas on March 1st, 155 delegates up for grabs of the 624 to be allocated next Tuesday, if he doesn't win Texas, it's going to be very hard for him to credibly say, I can organize and I can win, because if you can't win your own home state, you can't win anywhere. All right, Major Garrett in Washington, thank you. Thank you. And stick with us tonight. We'll have full analysis before and after the debate starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's right here on CBSN.